In this brain bit by bit, I will show images of hemimegalin carefully. A malformation of cortical development with intractable epilepsy. Because we are going more and more towards molecular medicine, looking at genes, proteins and pathways, I will start with the mTOR pathway, which is abnormal in hemimegalencephaly, as well as in focal cortical dysplasia, tuberous sclerosis complex and many other diseases. mTOR stands for target of rapamycin, and rapamycin is a drug that was discovered in bacteria on Rapa Nui, or Easter Island, that turned out to be, to be a very strong immunosuppressant and was used in transplant patients for decades. The mTOR pathway is highly conserved during evolution, which means that it has remained the same in different species, and this indicates that it's a very important pathway. And mTOR is involved in cell growth. Before cells divide, they have to grow, get bigger. And cell growth is not just about getting more mass. It's a very coordinated process. And mTOR coordinates this. I couldn't find an image of the consequences of mTOR problems in the supratentorial brain. So this is a study from cerebellar Purkinje cells, which are GABAergic, but Purkinje cells also arise from the ventricular zone, like the glutamate neurons in the supratentorial brain. And if there's hyperactivation of mTOR, the neurons in green have larger cell bodies, more dendrites, and unfortunately, if you compare these images at 12 weeks, they go into apoptosis faster. For neurons, the important steps in the mTOR pathway are PA3K, AKT, and mTOR1. And in the beginning of the mTOR pathway, you can see the NMDA receptor with glutamate. Because this pathway is abnormal in patients with hemimegalencephaly, the epilepsy is, in is not responsive to the normal anti-epileptic drugs, but mTOR inhibitors might be effective. And What happens in the ventricular layer, there's too much proliferation and too much large neurons and glial cells. And this abundance of abnormally large neurons and glial cells migrates to the cortex and gives overgrowth of usually one hemisphere. Sometimes it is difficult to see which hemisphere is abnormal. If you look at these T1 and T2 weighted images of a one month old boy with hemimegalencephaly and you look closely, you can see that in the right hemisphere there's blurring of the gray white matter boundary, so this is the abnormal hemisphere. On the T2 weighted image, the white matter should not be myelinated in a one month old child. And in the right hemisphere, there's low signal in the white matter indicative of premature myelination and the myelination is driven by electrical activity and when there's already a synapse formed the neurons also myelinate to prevent that there are other synapses formed on the same axon. Hemimegalencephaly is not always one hemisphere it might also be part of a hemisphere, and then it's called hemi hemimegalencephaly. And again, in this case, there's a mutation in the mTOR pathway, or it might be 
one entire hemisphere and a little bit of the other hemisphere. And also in this patient there was a mutation in the mTOR pathway. Thanks for watching and until next time when we will discuss the differential diagnosis of hemimegalencephaly, rasmussen encephalitis and Sturge-Weber syndrome.